All right, so it has been nearly four years I've had this 2021 Tesla Model 3, and in that time, I've driven over 60,000 kilometers with it, hauled far too many toilets than I'm proud to admit, and had to ride around with a bent rear fender for around six months. More on why that is later on in the video. But while this is now the 2021 Model 3, which is the past generation, which has since been replaced by the, let's just be real here, awesome looking new Tesla Model 3. Well, this is still the Model 3 that most people are familiar with and that we're gonna continue trading on the secondary market for years to come. So after almost four years of having this vehicle, I wanted to make one last video putting the past generation Model 3 in the spotlight here on YouTube. And like I said, after four years of ownership of this Tesla, here in Canada going through some very harsh winters and extremely humid summers. Well, this car has been through a lot and I wanted to give you my final thoughts of ownership of this car, as well as the overall Tesla user experience and whether or not I've enjoyed this past four years enough to upgrade into the new Model 3. Let's do it. All right, so the first impression anyone gets from a car is of course going to be the exterior. And most people are going to make a relatively quick opinion as to whether or not they'd even consider a car based on its looks alone, especially at the price point of a Tesla. So whether or not you like the look of the past generation Model 3, like this one, or the new Model 3 that I think looks fantastic, well, of course, that's a matter of opinion. But I know for a fact that a lot of people weren't necessarily huge fans of the previous Model 3 look. Now, I might be biased here, but I actually really did like the look of the current car, the past Model 3, especially with the blacked out trim pieces and heavily tinted windows. But unfortunately here in Quebec, you're not allowed to actually tint the front windows. And I've never really been a huge fan of that blacked out back windows, but transparent front windows look. So I just left it at factory. That being said though, I'd love to know what your thoughts are on the new Model 3's exterior versus this past generations. Make sure to comment down below either old or new new make sure to let me know other than that the front headlights and high beams are super bright the front trunk adds a bit of space that i use to house the mobile charger and a couple of bottles of windshield washer fluid as well as the stock wheels i think look pretty decent without the hubcaps on them by the way the new ones also look pretty good so no complaints there for the free 18 inch wheels that come with the car and finally two things that i've both liked about the model 3's exterior but that have on occasion in the winter been a problem are the recessed door handles and the hidden charge port that is built right into the rear headlight. So there's no denying that these two elements do look really sick and make the car sleeker 99% of the time, but on the off chance that you say park the car outside in the winter and it snows or there is freezing rain, when well, you're caught having to pick and break the ice off before being able to even access the interior of the car. Now, I luckily park my car in the garage during the winter, but I'm well aware of the fact that, you know, this is a luxury that not everyone has access to, so I did want to mention that. Okay, moving on from the exterior styling, we of course want our cars to last, which is actually harder said than done for cars here in Canada that are unfortunately exposed to snow, ice, salt, and therefore rust, terrible road quality as well that tests your car's limits basically every time that you take it out on the road. But before speaking about build quality, I want to mention the paint quality, as this is the first line of defense, of course, that your car's body panels have against the elements. So although from far, the car still looks great well when you take a closer look reality kind of sets in here and it's pretty bad here are a bunch of shots around the car to show you what i mean the paint is completely peeling off the front fender the rockers are dusted in paint chips uh, and even behind the doors surprisingly the paint is just disappearing which isn't something that you want or expect from a car at this price point point. and keep in mind i'm not doing anything out of the ordinary i've driven this car on average around 1500 kilometers per month and during the winter I park in my heated garage so it's not like I'm leaving it outside in the elements all winter long it is in a heated garage most of the time even in the winter now I'm not sure if Tesla's addressed this for the new generation model 3 with higher quality paint I couldn't really find anything about this online but I really hope so as I don't want to see what this car would even look like in another four years additionally when I got this car three and a half four years ago white happened to be the included color at the time that I didn't come at an extra cost uh, but for the new model right now stealth gray as they call it 
is the included color with white being a $1,300 premium and black and red a $2,000 premium. So that is definitely something to consider as well. All right, that brings us to the build quality itself, which is something that Teslas are notorious for, especially failing suspension parts and cabin rattles, all of which this car has been victim of over the past couple of years. So starting with the suspension, this generation's Model 3's ride is pretty rough, especially as a rear passenger and especially on Canadian roads. Now, I know the new Model 3 it does have a different suspension setup. It is a lot smoother. You don't feel the road nearly as much. And the interior cabin is also a lot quieter, which again, I can confirm as I've driven that car. Uh, and these were immediately evident to me in the first couple of minutes driving the car. That said, hopefully the suspension in the new Model 3 offers more than just a better ride, but is also more durable as I've had to change the control arms and a couple of other pieces related to the suspension on every single wheel of this car. Now, to be fair, it was all under warranty, so I didn't have to pay anything out of pocket per se for these repairs, which was great. And I've mentioned it before, but truly the road quality where I live is an absolute embarrassment. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that these cars Cars here age three times faster than down in the United States as a result of smoother roads and avoiding salt in the winter that rust up every component of the car. And finally, for the exterior section of this overview, last year I had the misfortune of having been hit in the rear driver's side fender, which turned into an eight month ordeal where I essentially had to spend more than half of a year driving around with a dented rear fender. So here's the thing, Tesla is very particular about who works on their cars and collision repair is not something that they do in house, at least not at the points of service in my region of Ottawa, Ontario, rather they outsource this to certified body shops. And by the way, for the 95% of other repairs though or issues that you'll have with your Tesla, you'll simply go through the Tesla app to request and manage service appointments, which I must say is extremely convenient and they'll either come to you to fix or schedule a time at a local Tesla service shop. So that is part of the Tesla experience that I have enjoyed. What I didn't love though, was having to deal with the body shop that was assigned to me, who was essentially so backed up that they gave me an appointment six months after the incident took place. And upon going to my appointment, well, they kept the car for five days before calling back up to tell me that they ended up ordering the wrong part and that I have to come pick my car back up and then come back a month later for a new appointment. So of course, this is going to be case by case. And I did make a huge complaint to Tesla who told me that they're well aware of this issue and they are supposedly working on finding solutions to expedite this process, which for all Tesla owners sakes, I really hope so. So the Tesla's interior is one of its most iconic, but also polarizing aspects of its product offering by having fully eliminated gauge clusters and unnecessary buttons, focusing really on that one center screen that I'm sure everyone here has seen by now. Now, when you first get a Tesla, it'll be weird for sure, just like any new interface that you aren't used to, but trust me, as a daily driver, you'll get used to this in a couple of days tops and you'll never think about it again. The screen's absolutely massive it offers everything you need right there. And right now my car has a free month of full self driving, which is absolutely wild. Just look at how the car recognizes everything and its surroundings. But yeah, so bottom line, this is one of the main complaints people do have though about Teslas, but seriously, they just haven't owned one probably long enough to understand the beauty in this simple design. The next main part of this car that's immediately apparent when you hop in are the white seats that I have absolutely loved. The look is just super unique and I'm sure you're all wondering how they've lived up for the past four years. Well, yes, they do get somewhat stained after a couple of months from the dye, say in your pants, but they're really easy to clean with any type of cleaner and I'll let you decide as to whether or not they've held up to your standards with these shots right here of them. 
Now, I know that the new Model 3 has both heated but also ventilated seats, which is awesome. I wish that the past Model 3 had ventilated seats, but hey, if you're getting the new one, that's a very nice bonus. And again, I had the chance to drive the new model and the seats felt way more comfortable. They're also a lot more bolstered around the shoulders, keeping you in place when you're driving. Okay, and for the rest of the interior, I'm just gonna barrel through a laundry list of things from my experience as a Tesla Model 3 owner. First off, the quality of the interior. So overall, I really do like the interior. The seats are great and all. There are some aspects of it though that are a little bit subpar. For example, the steering wheel here, you can see uh, from the shots that the stitching around it has come off in some areas. So I had to fix that. Also the whatever material is on the steering wheel has come off sort of in some of the areas where there's the most contact with my hands. So, you know, those are little things that for the price of this car aren't necessarily expected. Otherwise the glass roof is really cool it's a great feature it does not open however I've never had any issues with you know the Sun being too bright through it or anything it is just there at all times it looks great and uh, that is a feature I really like the chargers as well at the front for your phone are also extremely convenient although with my larger phone it often doesn't work. I actually have to take my case off in order for the phone to lay flat on the charger so that it actually pulls a charge. So half the time, I just have it plugged into a USB-C port. Otherwise, the quality of the sound system is also really good and I'm pretty sure it's even better. It's been upgraded for the new Model 3, but honestly, it is just a great sound system nonetheless. The size of the back trunk is also quite large, especially with the seats down. It's larger than you would think. I've hauled a ton of things in here, uh, while renovating units in my real estate business. And I've even put my 60 inch flat screen TV in there. Uh, when I bought it, it was in the box and everything and it fit. It was snug, but it did fit. So that wraps up my take and review on the interior of the Tesla Model 3. And now I'd like to take a moment to cover the miscellaneous category that doesn't uh, really fall into the interior and exterior categories. Let's take a look. All right, so starting off in the miscellaneous category here, a couple of things that I really like about the Tesla. So this is the first thing Thing being uh, regenerative braking. Now this isn't only Tesla specific, there's other EVs that have this as well, but having the regenerative braking has been paramount in saving a lot of the brakes on this vehicle over the past four years. So I haven't had to change the actual brakes themselves once since getting this car. For example, I'm coming up to a stop here, I'm just taking my foot off the gas and we're braking without having to actually use the brakes. So not only does it you know, recharge your battery a bit, that's not the best feature in my opinion, just the fact that you're driving with one pedal is absolutely fantastic. So regen braking is a huge plus for EV vehicles in my opinion, after now having driven for a while, every time I go back to a combustion vehicle or even my motorcycle, I'm reminded of the reality of just coasting all the way to the red light if you don't. Uh, slam on the brakes essentially. Now of course also I can't make a video about a Tesla without speaking about just how fun it is to drive and how fast it is. So it has a lot of different modes within the settings uh, but when you're in you know sport mode essentially that's not what it's called but when you're in the sport mode equivalent well it is just so fast especially for the price. This is the base model that is by far the slowest and by far the cheapest of all the Teslas currently in manufacturing but it is just so fast, right? You, you press on the, on the gas and it just, it just goes, exactly. Sophie filming just you know flew back into her seat. So really fun to drive. If you need to pass someone, extremely easy to do. And yeah, that is definitely another thing that I've thoroughly enjoyed about having a Tesla. Next up, one of the things I've loved the most about having an EV, and you know, it's very debatable online as to whether or not the savings on gas is worth the extra sticker price or whatnot, but regardless of that, honestly, just the convenience of not having to go to the gas station all the time to fill up is amazing. I never think about this. I have a charger at home that charges extremely quickly and it's ample for my everyday commuting and driving. So I pretty much just plug it in at night every night and I have it set and programmed in my phone to only start charging at I think 1 or 2 a.m. So between one or two and 5 a.m. is when it charges the car, when the electricity costs are as low as possible. So all in all, I've done this calculation before, I've made a couple of shorts on my other main channel and stuff, but it costs around $30 in gas each month 
to fill up this car and I drive all the time you know like again like I said I drive around 1500 kilometers uh, per month on average so you know do the math 30 bucks 1500 kilometers definitely not bad that's way better than the cost of gas right now but even uh, a couple years ago when it was two bucks a liter up here in Canada I was definitely saving quite a bit on gas and ongoing running cost fees and so yes of course this will also depend on where you live where you're located and then the cost of electricity but overall if you do live in an area where electricity is relatively cheap doing that math you'll probably be able to save quite a bit on the ongoing running cost of your car versus a combustion engine car but definitely do the math yourself and also as a result of not having a combustion engine while well, I haven't had to do a single oil change of course and other maintenance has also been relatively non-existent like for example changing belts or any other component that has a lot of movement in an engine that could break so that is something that I have really liked the only times I've had to really go to a service is for again that suspension which has been pretty bad uh, that is one of the caveats of the past generation model 3 otherwise well of course having the phone key is extremely convenient to heat the car in the winter cool it in the summer and overall just have your entire car experience right inside the Tesla application on your phone that is something I've really enjoyed and going back to the idea of just having a fob alone is kind of something that uh, I find bizarre almost at this point. Okay, now one of the largest cons that I've dealt with this car is the battery life is not even close to advertised. So when I bought mine, it said that the range was around 420 kilometers. That was the claimed range. Now I'll just be frank here. It is nowhere near that amount. In the summer, I'd say it's around maybe 85% of that amount, but in the winter, it can be as low as Honestly, it sounds crazy, but 50% depending on the conditions outside. And it makes planning road trips kind of stressful and difficult to actually predict, especially in the winter once again. So I live in Ottawa and let's say I went to Montreal a couple times, which technically is 200 or so kilometers. So in theory, you would think that you'd be able to go there and back on one charge. That is absolutely impossible, at least in my car, it is not feasible at all. In fact, one time I almost didn't even make it to Montreal in a snowstorm in the winter. I got to the charger right on the island uh, and I was at 1% battery. So safe to say there was quite a bit of range anxiety that day. And um, I don't know if the batteries got better or if my car was just a lemon or something, but I actually contacted Tesla. They did an assessment over the air and they said the battery was totally fine. So if that is the case, then the claimed range is not even close to what uh, they are saying on their website. So to summarize everything, have I enjoyed the past four years? The answer is yes. And would this push me into buying the new Model 3? Well, yes. Yes, and also since I've actually driven the car, most of all the issues that I had with the previous gen Model 3 have even somewhat been addressed. I'm really hoping the paint quality would be better in the next Model 3, the current now new generation. But other than that, the suspension's a lot better. It's quiet in the cabin. The overall seats are a lot better. They're more comfortable. They have ventilation. And yeah, I would assume that over time, the batteries will continue getting better and better as well. Because at the end of the day, Tesla yes they are cars but they are also kind of a big piece of tech if you think about it so that is also one of the reasons why four years ago I actually leased that car now knowing what I know now I probably would have just financed it and kept it um, but at the time you know Tesla's were really not popular you never saw them on the road so it was kind of um, a leap of faith essentially into buying this car but all in all it has been fantastic and I very well would have just purchased the car so I really hope you enjoyed today's video if you did, make sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel as well for more content, and make sure to check out everything else that's on my channel. So thanks all for watching. Hope this helped you. I'll see you in the next one.